Hey there all you fellow Droidiacs, this is David from the Droid Workshop. Today we're going to be starting a new series on building an astromech droid. Now I already have one of my own. I have an R6J5 that I built before episode 7. So when I built him he was considered legends, but thankfully with R6D8 Snap Wexley's yellow droid from episode 7, that style has now become canon. So I really like my droid, I really do, but I kind of wanted to build another one. So I've always loved the R2 style with the dome, but I've always been kind of a rebel myself. So I'm still going to build an R2 style, but mine is going to be R2C3 and he's going to be green. Now I do know that there is another green droid out there, which was Rick Oli's from episode one. R2A6, but mine's going to be a little bit darker green. My daughter's the one who suggested that I do this, and she's also the one that came up with the name, because this one I'm going to be attempting at some point in the future to make him radio controlled. And so when she heard that I was going to do that, she said, RC, R2, C3. So my eight-year-old girl is a little genius. <laughs> now, I know a few of you may be having thoughts of the Transformers running through your head, and that's okay. I like them, too. First thing we're going to build is the dome. I started off by printing all the pie panels first along with the upper cap and the upper dome pie wedges. Those little pieces of filament you see are for the alignment holes in the body pieces to help keep everything straight when gluing. A quick note about adhesives, you can use whatever you wish, and a lot of people use CA glue. I've used it in the past, and I will on some parts on this build, but when it's something this critical, I prefer E6000. The trade-off is you have to wait for the glue to fully cure before you can move on. Next up is the middle dome. It's a total of seven pieces that go together counterclockwise as you're looking down at it. Again, I used E6000 here to make sure it all lined up perfectly, along with binder clips to hold the pieces together as they cure. Something I wanted to point out is the upper dome pieces are lettered A through F. These go together clockwise looking down from the top. Upper panel A aligns with mid dome 1 when putting together. There are also alignment holes in the top of the mid dome pieces and the bottom of the upper dome parts to help you do this. For me, the joints were small and a little unstable even after the glue cured, so I went back later with my 3D pen and reinforced it a little bit. At this point, I had also finished the painting on the pie pieces and set them in place to visualize the final product. Quick tip, a project like this takes time, so count the little victories along the way as encouragement to keep going. Once the mid dome was done, I started working on the lower dome. These pieces have all the panel openings that print with small supports that have to be removed to set the panels in place. To avoid confusion, I labeled the first few panels that were printed to make sure I put them in the right spot later on. I had a little bit of an issue with printing two of these parts, but it was easily fixable by measuring what I had and cutting the model at that spot. I used my 3D pen to weld the pieces together, but I still had a gap that I would later fill with Bondo. Another quick tip on assembly, lower dome one and mid dome one line up. Self-explanatory, I know. After gluing the mid and lower domes, I used filler on the seams. This was a mistake because I should have used Bondo first for the major gaps, then filler later on for the finer details. The first coat of paint can be regular primer, two in one primer, or self etching primer, which is what I used. This is a great way to find all the spots that need more attention, and I had a lot. I didn't show the next layer of filler, or sanding, or painting with the 2-in-1 filler primer, or the sanding after that, because it's a few hours of boring repetition. I also skipped over the final coat of primer and painting the silver. Some builders have recommended using a black coating before the silver, and it does make a difference, but I didn't do that here. Now it's time to start installing the panels. Quick tip, 
Wherever you plan on using glue, epoxy, or whatever, you need to remove the paint from the edges that are going to be glued together. This will help avoid the glue sticking to only the paint and popping off later. There are quite a few panels that are permanently in place, but if, like me, you plan on making some of them open up later, I used hot glue to hold them in for the time being. The logic board holders were also permanently in place, but I chose to use some hot glue here to help keep it set while the E6000 cured. You don't have to do this, but you can if you want to. The radar eye installation does need to be permanent, but for now, I just use a little bit of hot glue to hold it onto the dome. The reason I did this is because I'm thinking of putting a Wi-Fi camera in the dome later, and to do so, I need to cut out a part of the dome behind the eye. It can be done if the eye is stuck on forever, but I don't want to take any chances. This particular dome file had what I think was the wrong hollow projector fitting for one of the openings. So I used Blender to rework that file and make it a melding of the pie holder and the rear projector housing. I noticed that the original file was round, but it needed a flat section to fit into the hole, and it needed the screw holes to hold on the back ring. I didn't have to do this, but I did it anyway. Now it's time for the ring. When you print these out, they will have the numbers on them. Here's number one. You can see that right there? Yeah right there number one so what I have done is after I printed them all out I looked at the 3d file to see where it goes and went ahead and marked it this will go on lower dome six this is lower dome one and that's the dividing line and the reason for that here is lower dome six here is lower dome one this one will go lining up with these holes will go right there. But these ring pieces got to be put together, uh, finished at the seams, and then painted. This, is, this upper ring is going to be painted to match the green of the rest of the panels, and then the lower dome is going to be painted. The lower dome ring is going to be painted uh, silver, uh, like the rest of the dome. So let's put this together. All right, it goes in. A counterclockwise motion so you have number one number two is gonna go here so that's why I went ahead and I marked this one to make sure to remind myself so they just slip in just like that but one of the things I am gonna do is I'm gonna take my 3d pen and just on the inside here because the lower dome the um, lower ring attaches up on this way so there's going to be some gaps right here I'm going to use my 3d pen and actually permanently weld these parts together not the top part because that's what's going to go up against the dome but this inside right here I'm going to permanently weld that together so that this does not move while I'm trying to put the uh, filler putty on it in order to make this a solid ring so but here we go so here are all of our parts and there you go, the ring is now together but I've got to finish it off. Alright, so here's where we are now. I. Uh, in my original design, I was going to make this green. I may still do it, but I don't know. I've already got the hollow projector installed, but so I may just leave it silver. But I've got the upper ring printed, finished, painted, everything. No seams, no nothing. I'm really happy about that. I've only got it in with a couple of screws around here. 
This is just temporarily holding it in place because I've still got to do the bottom ring, but I don't know what kind of Lazy Susan I'm going to get yet. And uh, the file comes with two options, either the smaller, the smaller diameter ring or the larger diameter ring. So I don't know which one I'm going to need yet. So I'm, I'm pretty much done with this project for now with the head. So it's going to be time to move on to the body later. I found the um, mounts for the servo and the arms for the pie wedges. Um, I honestly don't know if they will work for this, for these side panels right here. I'm going to have to find out if they do. Um, but in any case, either way, um, I've got this one, I've started it, but I'm actually not going to print any more until I have the servos and I'm ready to animate these panels. So for now, these are going to stay the way they are. I've at least got my first one. Uh, it comes with this really convenient um, alignment jig that I still have to figure out how to make it work. I know it does something like this, but I'm not too sure. So I'm just going to have to wait, figure out how to use it. In all, it's taken me about two weeks to get to this point, which included a lot of printing, gluing, filling, sanding, printing, sanding, painting, filling, sanding, painting, painting, and gluing to get to this point. I'm pretty happy with my results. It's by no means perfect, I know, but I like it. So now it's on to the body. But that's going to take a little while because I still have some fixing up to do in my shop to give myself adequate space to cut and put together the larger pieces. So until then, I hope what I've done in this video has been helpful. I hope that it's been inspiring. And as always, may the droids be with you.